You asked for it, and we're delivering it. The viewers have been asking how to get access to those juicy 4% yields on the two-year treasuries, as well as other portions of the Fed's treasury market. There's new products recently launched to go a long way toward answering those needs. Let's talk with Alex Morris. He's the CIO, CIO of FM Investments. He's just launched a new series of single bond treasury ETFs. Also joining us, my old buddy John Davy, John Davi, founder and chief investment officer for Astoria Portfolio Advisors. Alex, uh, we've talked about single stock ETFs on this show for a long time, the Tesla long and short ETF, for example. Single bond ETFs are really new. You've got a 10-year, a two-year, a three-month that launched uh, in August. Tell us, for example, about the two-year. Tell us how this whole thing works. What are you getting when you buy this? Sure. So you're getting access to the U.S. Treasury on the run two-year. It's a cash bond. There's no leverage. There's no derivatives. It's, it's quite different than a single stock ETF. And in that sense, it's simpler. It's easier. You get access to what you would buy if you were to go and purchase an ETF, sorry, a, a two-year Treasury on its own. So every month, uh, and you see the notes here, there is a new auction of two-year notes. That happens every month. We know that. Uh, and you sell the old one, and you buy the new one, right? So you always have the most recent auction. Correct. Now, this is not free. You charge 15 basis points for this. So you don't you're not actually going to get the exact number when the fees are deducted. Uh, but uh, taxable events. No taxable Explain events. That. So Right, and that's because of the magic of ETFs, exactly. right? Because the market maker actually is the one that does the trading and there's no taxable event. Exactly. Explain that to people. So when you roll the, uh, the Treasury from, say, last month's to this month's, if there's a, a negative event, you know, we would just make a trade. But if there's a positive capital gain, we'll go out and we'll work with the market maker to eliminate that. And since we're going to roll it 12 times a year, we know that's coming, which is good news for us because we can plan with the market makers to get really good pricing when that happens. So you're not worried about, are we a good trader? You're worried more about, are we planning appropriately? And the answer is, we, given the regularity of the auctions, we can do that. And to date, we've done trading at the NAV itself. So the fund hasn't paid for liquidity. The shareholders haven't paid for that liquidity. And they've not experienced a taxable event as a result. Yeah, so John, we've got um, single stock ETFs. Now we have these single bond ETFs. You're an investment advisor. You're, that's why we have you here. Is there room for these kinds of investments? I mean, where would they fit in, for example, uh, as an investment advisor? Is there circumstances under which you would recommend them? Or would you just say, yeah, just go to the you know, Treasury Direct and, and, and buy them? Try to figure, tell us. How sure. you use these? Sure. So we, in full disclosure, we've been buying it direct from the Treasury uh, uh, Direct, so at our custodians. Um, you know, maybe we should look at Alex's funds. But, you know, for me as a multi-asset investor that's allocated across stocks, bonds, commodities, alternatives, you know, for me, like, the game has changed now that, you know, Fed funds at three on its way to four. The two years is at, you know, 4.3 percent. I think stocks have competition. So what we've been telling our advisors, our, our clients, is like, look, you know, you don't have to be long just stocks at this point. You should be clipping coupons vis-a-vis, -vis, you know, the two-year treasury. I think that's a sweet spot. We've been going, you know, direct to the government. Um, but, you know, perhaps we should be looking at Alex's product. They seem to make a lot of sense. Did they do the role for you? So, so effectively, I'm just outsourcing my role to Alex's firm, which we're not opposed to. There's a cost, like you said, 15 basis points. Um, but conceptually, the idea that you want to own treasuries, I think, makes a lot of sense. Yeah. So you were mentioning stocks, bonds, commodities. Diversification is the key here. You're, here you're only owning a very specific product within the, the bond universe. So obviously, we, we generally, being a Jack Bogle disciple, you want diversification, too, as well. You don't want everybody just throwing their money at a two-year uh, uh, a note, for Correct. example. Yeah, and we've been laddering bonds across not only treasuries, but, you know, mm -hmm. municipals and corporates. So we've been using some of these bull share products, uh, BSCO, uh, BSMO. So those are for, you know, corporates and they're for munis, and that's the 2024 maturity. So I, I agree with you, Bob, you know, own not just treasuries, but also other, you know, fixed income uh, securities. All right. So and I, I know I'm sort of, this is an educational moment to explain to people why own a single bond ETF versus, say, going on Treasury Direct, which is the website, and buying uh, just a two-year bond, for example. What, what, what's the difference and what advantages do you have? Sure. So I encourage folks to try it. I mean, the Treasury Direct is access to the government. It's the real deal. But it's somewhat complicated. Bond math is hard. It's the part of finance most folks prefer to forget or never have done in the first place. The cash flows are messy. Getting a 1099 with all of the action of accretion and coupon payments is sometimes off-putting. It's much easier to buy the ETF, and since we give you direct access, it's essentially the same proxy. 
that it's also easier to trade, it's easier to rebalance. There's no commission in most places when you charge it. And the market makers have done a great job keeping the spreads tight, often right. tighter than most folks would get trading the bond itself. And what's the advantage of rolling over every month? Ultimately, it's liquidity. Most risk managers want to be on the run uh, at the most. Because liquid. that's the most liquid it's one. It's the most liquid by a wide margin. When you move even a month or two off, the spreads can triple or five or six X, which doesn't sound like much, but when you're buying tens of thousands of units, that's a very large number very quickly. So the, the on-the-run tends to be the most liquid. The on-the-run 10-year, for example, underpins most of the global financial infrastructure we come to. It prices everything from mortgages to car loans to what the forward valuation on the NASDAQ is ultimately going to be. Right. So staying on the run is, is important. And, and for most folks, that liquidity, when you want it, is what's there. If we go back to March 8th, 2020, some of the spreads on multi-bond products got very large. And it wasn't because the on-the-run treasuries lost liquidity or the treasury market dried up. It was those market makers also had to move a substantial number of bonds that were not particularly popular. Yeah. So who's your, your target audience here? Is it the, the buy and hold crowd? Is it active traders? I mean, one thing that strikes me as very interesting is you could short this, right? You certainly So this can. could be part of some kind of, you know, portfolio where you're doing some very complicated maneuvers going long and short equities or long and short bond funds, for example. Exactly. So we, we think treasuries are probably appropriate for most folks, but long term, we suspect that the active user set are advisors who have a very specific interest in being a certain place on the curve, as well as uh, in some institutions who don't want to do the roles on their own. And then finally, some retail investors who traditionally haven't had access to some of the rates mechanisms that institutional investors have. So if you want to, you could always buy a future on a bond. It's $1,000 a point, 32 points yeah. per, uh, per percentage point, and there's a lot of math to do that and a lot of leverage. You know, John, one of the uh, obvious advantages of a, a single bond ETF is that, I, I get this complaint all the time, multi-bond ETFs, you're locking in all these low yields potentially for, you know, several years down the road. I get people saying, I, I can't get this yield on my multi-bond ETFs. Well, you, the reason you can't is they own old bonds yeah. <laughs> that have lousy yields on them. So, it, it, I mean, this strikes me as another interesting reason why people might want to just stay with the front, whatever the most, beyond the run, as he calls them. Yeah, I think Alex Firm is always going to roll it for you. So, you know, effectively, you get the latest, you know, bond. So that seems to make sense to me. I, I just think big picture, like, you know, we want to be laddered. We went on targeted maturities because, you know, the curve is very flat. So I like the two-year. It's a sweet spot. Um, I, I don't know if I would be going out and buying, like, LQD specifically or J&K specifically. Like, oh, I think LQD wanna... is the largest corporate bond ETF. Right. It's, it's, it's a basket of corporate bonds of, of different maturities. Correct. It's a basket, you know, thousands of bonds, investment-grade corporates. Um, J&K is, you know, the high-yield bond ETF that gives you, again, exposure to a broad basket of uh, junk bonds. But... You know, I think like my message is to get laddered and specific maturities, given that the curve is pretty flat, two years a sweet spot. And it sounds like what Alex's firm is doing is, is outsourcing the roll-in. Um, so I think for your question before, it makes sense for people that don't want to sit on their computers and roll their, you know, their bond, uh, you know, maturities constantly. So it's, it's another extension of the ETF ecosystem, just extend, you know, outsourcing the portfolio yeah. management to another firm. Now, are we expecting just like single stock ETFs are proliferating like rabbits, or are we going to see single bond ETFs proliferating? You're going to launch other products, right? We, we are. I hadn't uh, thought about the rabbit analogy, but yeah, so we're, we're looking at launching a six month and a 12 month and a 30 year, which will round out the sort of short end of the curve. So folks can have access to that very steep part. As John points out, the middle part of the curve is pretty flat. But we do know folks have some interest in the long bonds, just add duration to portfolios and for all of the other risk management characteristics of having a 30-year treasury. Can you see this happening internationally, uh, launching gilts, for example, or, or German bonds? Is that feasible? So we couldn't launch a single gilt ETF, although that would be fairly spicy today, um, simply because it wouldn't be an ETF. It would be an ETN. The government, the IRS, actually sets the ETF rule, and the issues were concentration. But they have one exception, treasuries. So all of the ETFs that buy treasuries are invested 100% in one issuer. It's the United States government. But the cash exemption rule allows us to hold just that security. Could you have a single bond 
corporate bond ETF? Could you have, could you launch a GE corporate bond ETF for you know if they had a, an auction, for example, or they 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 launched we a, could, a new bond? You could offer it as a product, but it wouldn't qualify under the tax code as best we've been advised as an ETF because it would violate the issuer concentration. You could try, like many of the single stock ETFs, to create a swap or something. When you say it would violate the issuer concentration, what does that mean? There's a rule that requires you to hold no more than 20%, 25%, sorry, in any one issuer. So as a result, you have to hold five things, four issuers at minimum in cash or five issuers. The government is a single issuer, but it's exempted itself from that rule. So for, and it's why when you look at the single stock ETFs, they actually hold a swap in a handful of other things. One, to get some leverage, and two, because if they held just one issuer, they wouldn't qualify for the tax benefits of an ETF. Yeah, it's a good, very good point.